Hello everyone. Here I'm going to try and make a uh, a robot uh, using two motors uh, so we can drive it around on the panel and actually create the robot in real life. I'm going to use an ECI R40 as my target, but obviously you can use any, any microcontroller you want. And we're going to begin by uh, creating some objects on the panel, which is going to be our, our simulation of the robot. Start with a top down view and I'm just going to drag on a square or cube sorry and I'm going to drag on um, two cylinders. The cylinders uh, if we rotate a bit if I just hold control and left uh, mouse button I can rotate around the panel like this moving the mouse and holding control and scrolling in and out rather than zooming in and out. If I select the object, I can go to the position in the properties window and to see which axis I want to rotate, uh, I've, I've got these uh, these lines here. So the, the, this line, the green is the Y, uh, the, the blue is the Z and the red is the X. <clears throat> so here we want to rotate around the Y axis. So I'm going to add two degrees. Uh, and I also want to scale it. Um, so, in terms of size, it's the depth. Here you can see this is the local uh, Z, which we want to reduce. So, I'm going to reduce this to 5. I'm going to do the same thing with this object. So, rotate by Y 90 degrees and reduce Z to 5. Then on my main object, I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. Um, so I'm going to have it 40 by 40. And we'll reduce the depth down a bit, so maybe 25. Um, I want to bring the wheels a bit closer. So if I click them and weld coordinates, uh, it allows me to set whereabouts they are. So on the X, I probably want to be. Um, this. The size of this is 40, so this should be at um, minus 22.5 and plus 22.5. 2.5 is because this is 5 mil deep, uh, so half of that is 2.5. Add 20, uh, 22.5. So they're lining up quite nicely. I might just change the colour. So if I select that there, I go to properties, then I get the colour property, and I can set that to whatever I want. So I'm going to make them, um, let's say green. If I do them different colours, then it's very easy to see which way around the robot is. So I have green and uh, some pinky purple. If you click the arrows here, it'll actually snap to that um, orientation, so it's quite a handy way of jumping around and, and getting back to a known, a good known position on the panel. So, we've got our very basic robot here. Um, let's see if we can do anything else with it. So, I'm going to select all the all the objects on the panel. I'm going to group them, and I'm going to call group um, our robot. Uh, if we double click, we can get back inside the the objects of the group. So this is the body. This is the left wheel. Oops. And right wheel. Okay. Right. To make this move around on the panel. What we need to do is create a, a, a simulation event. So if we go to our Project Explorer pane and the events, then let's have a look at what events are available to us. The timer event in System Timer is, uh, is used to create a regular occurring um, simulation event that will call a macro in your program. 
and allow us to manipulate the component on the panel. So if I double click the timer uh, option, then it brings up the uh, add event macro editor. If I double click macro, it'll generate the macro for me. Uh, so it's called the EV timer. Uh, it's got parameters, so this is which timer has triggered um, the macro to run. Uh, and it's got return. So I'm going to go OK, and I'm going to go OK and edit. And that brings it up here so I can start to generate code for it. Now, to, <coughs> to control the robot, I'm going to have uh, two global variables. So I've gone to the globals, under variables, and I'm just going to type in two variables. And this is going to be the speed of the, of the motors. I might actually make these uh, integers uh, just to, as then it allows me to go negative as well. So let's say um, we have speed left, comma, speed right. And this creates both variables for me at once, both with the same type. Um, so what we want to do is create a macro to allow us to set the speed. So let's create um, a few macros. If I click on the macros tab of Project Explorer, double click on macro, create a new macro. So let's have forwards uh, speed. This is going to be a byte, so 0 to 2 by 5. Um, the description is drives the No return. Okay, forward and inside here we're going to use a calculation icon, and the speed left will equal our local variable speed. And if we copy paste that, we can use speed right equals dot speed. So that's forwards. Let's save this as a demo. Uh, and if we right click our forward macro and select duplicate, and we rename this one backwards, so drive the robot backwards at a variable speed, and this time speed left equals uh, minus speed, to give us a negative value. And let's also add a stop. Stops the buggy, we don't need speed for that, and we just copy our calculation icon. We say speed left equals zero, speed right equals zero. Uh, if we create a main, um, let's create a simple loop, and we'll just have um, macro calls. So we'll say forwards, speed. Uh, 100, we have a delay, seconds, say so 2 seconds, and then we'll come uh, backwards, speed 100, and add in another 2 second delay. So, we've got uh, a program that's going to uh, control our variables here, so now we want a uh, our timer to sort of fire and pick up what these variables are doing. So in our main, let's also add a simulation macro. Uh, and this is to enable the timer to fire. So if we go system, timer start. The ident is the uh, parameter for the timer macro. Um, so we can use uh, various timers running at different speeds. Milliseconds uh, is the number of milliseconds to wait. Um, the the shortest is probably going to be about 10 milliseconds uh, because of how Windows works. But if we say we're going to want this to fire every 50 milliseconds, we'll save that. Then in the EV timer um, macro, we can do checks on speed left and speed right. So if Speed 
my So the two values are equal, which are always going to be here, um, but I'll get onto this in, in a little while. Then we'll have a simulation macro, which says panel position, um, and we want to get, so we want to get the position uh, of where this currently is. Um, the handle we're going to use, uh, if we use the drop down and go to the uh, components part, then we can see we've got um, our various objects on the panel. Uh, the robot is the overall group, so if we double click that, we've got that as the handle. And the handle this returns is a, a positional handle referring to where this robot um, group object is. So if we create a local variable, type handle, and we say this is uh, position. Then we've taken the position on the panel of the robot and we've stored it into this local handle variable. So now what we want to do is we want to move this handle. So if we copy paste, uh, now what we want to do is move um, by. Uh, the handle that we want to move is our local variable handle. So position uh, there. Um, the axis that we're moving along is the y axis, it's the green one. Um, so let's set that here. And because we've got we've checked to see if the speed is the same, we can just use either of these variables. Now you see that there's a float here, and this is a, a, a simple integer. Um, and if we left it as an integer with a value of 100, the, the robot had moved very, very quickly every time the timer macro fired. So what we need to do is use um, a bit of maths to uh, make this into a floating point value. It's simulation only, so it's not going to affect our actual embedded code. So we're going to say float uh, speed left divided by, say, uh, 100.0. What that'll do is it'll take the speed value and divide it by um, a floating point type cast value of 100. Uh, so we should get a value between 0 and 1 of speeds of 0 and 100. Click OK. So we've moved, we've taken the position here, we've moved the handle here, and then we want to animate this moving to the new position. So we take a new simulation act macro and we say um, animate. Destination is the robot, that's what we want to move. The starting position is uh, the robot, that's where it currently is. The end position is uh, our position handle in milliseconds time to take to perform we've got our timer interrupt kicking in every 50 milliseconds so let's say uh, 50 milliseconds we save that and we zoom out a little bit and um, then hopefully click and pay Movement. Aha! I see what's happening. The the, the timer is fired uh, and it's moving once, uh, but then the fire is never re-triggered. Uh, sorry, the, the timer is never re-triggered. So if we copy uh, this code from main into our EV timer macro, we put it at the end, then this will allow the timer to keep firing um, repeatedly. So let's try this. That's better. Now we have the robot going backwards and forwards.
the robot's jumping as it returns sometimes. So let's see if we can improve that. You also see when I've stopped the simulation, it's actually still going <laughs> because the timer is still uh, firing. So let's see if we can fix these problems. Okay, I've reloaded the project and that's stopped the uh, stopped the object uh, moving away. Let's get it back into the center of the panel. So let's just set the X and Y to zero zero. And there we go, back in the middle again. Okay, so we probably want to add a, a variable which is a boolean which says is running. Um, Okay. Then in the event manager, we'll add a simulation stop event. We create a macro for that. Okay. 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 Uh, in the macro um, section of Property Explorer, EB stop. And in here, we're going to set um, is running equal to zero. In main, we'll copy. Oops, uh, is running equal zero? Calculation. And we'll say is running one. And then in the EV timer, we have an if is running, and that'll that'll kill the timer from repeating once it's stopped the simulation. So let's see how that works. So it's moving. Yeah, quick stop. It stops. Brilliant. If I select the panel and press Ctrl Z, it'll jump back to where it was before we started simulation. So that's a nice way of just resetting everything back to uh, start positions. So I have a problem with the robot jumping backwards and forwards while it's animating. Um, I found out that the the timer is firing every 50 milliseconds. The animation is taking 50 milliseconds to run. Um, so there's a possibility that the animation might not finish, which means that the position object handle here uh, may get an incorrect position. So if we add the simulation icon, uh, panel, position, stop animate, then this ensures that the animation's at the end position uh, when we get the position handle. So if I run this, and now the simulation's a bit uh, smoother. Many thanks to all for watching, and join me for part two uh, coming shortly.